So in this study of 32 samples, 25% came back with the presence of PFAS. Especially in the crotch area, believe it or not, was the highest concentration of these chemicals. Brands like Athleta Girl, Gaim, NYX, Lululemon, LuLaRoe, Old Navy, Viore, Yogalicious all failed the test. Could your yoga pants house one of the most toxic chemicals that we know? The answer is yes. Your sportswear could be hella toxic. Consumer study by Momovation, shout out to that group doing excellent work for consumer product testing for chemicals. Well, they sent 32 pairs of activewear, mostly workout leggings and yoga pants, to an EPA certified lab. They were looking for the presence and testing for PFAS, or more affectionately known as forever chemicals. These are per- and polyfluoral alkyl substances. They're synthetic, and there's over 4,000 different types of PFAS. And now we're just really starting to understand how they're affecting us. So PFAS are man-made chemicals and have been using in the industry and consumer products worldwide since the 1950s, and they're a problem. A big one. They're some of the nastiest chemicals known to humanity. Some of the ways they harm you and I is that they reduce our immune response, connected to cancer, increase risk of asthma and thyroid disease, damage to the liver, damage to the kidney, and other serious impacts overall to our health. They're called forever chemicals because they take a really long time to break down in our bodies, even longer in the environment. So we eliminate them on a scale of years seven to 10 years on average to eliminate these chemicals, and they have an affinity for the lungs, kidney, and brain. So in this study of 32 samples, 25% came back with the presence of PFAS, especially in the crotch area, believe it or not, was the highest concentration of these chemicals. Brands like Athleta Girl, Gaim, NYX, Lululemon, LuLaRoe, Old Navy, Viore, Yogalicious all failed the test. So how are these chemicals absorbed? Certainly through oral exposure, which is why we have a parts per trillion limit on them, but the chemicals, and these clothes were at parts per million, which is a bigger amount. On a side note, the CDC recommends that the EPA limit be lowered 10 times the amount that they're deeming safe. Obviously, we're not orally exposing ourselves to yoga pants, but you sweat. And if you're sweating, studies show that these chemicals are more rapidly absorbed into the body. If these materials are exposed to the elements, like the sun, PFAS can increase by 100-fold. And on dry skin, preliminary research shows that it can actually move through the skin as well. So stay away from any materials that say stain resistant, water resistant, moisture wicking, sweat wicking, dry fit. You can almost guarantee that those materials have PFAS. But here's the irony. The brands don't need to use these chemicals. Actually, 75% of the brands in the study didn't contain these chemicals. So here are some brands that came back with no PFAS. 90 Degrees, All-in-One Motion, Aloe, Blanky, Calia, Fabletics, Gap Fit, Livy, L.L. Bean, Laura Jane, Marika, Mizuno, Nike, Noble, Reebok, Spanx, Sweaty Betty, Under Armour, Zella, and Zia. Now, because any come back with PFAS does not mean that these synthetic fibers are healthy, especially if you're being active in them. So take that into consideration because they're far from perfect, although they were devoid of those PFAS, which is very important. Instead, look for materials that are made with GOT certified cotton. For example, Groceries Apparel, Mate the Label, Packed Organic, were some that were found to be really, really good quality materials with no PFAS or any other synthetics. So we know about this chemical, we know it affects the body, we know it's an athleisure, but where else is it? An investigation earlier this year by Toxic Free Future called Toxic Convenience, the Hidden Cost of Forever Chemicals in Stain and Water Resistant Products highlights some of the major concerns. So the three categories they looked at were outdoor apparel, bedding, tablecloths and napkins. And they selected 20 items from each of these three categories. They got them at Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond, Costco, Dick Sporting Goods, Kohl's, Macy's, REI, Target, TJX, and Walmart. And they sent them out to an independent lab for testing. And you ready for this? They found that PFAS were in 72% of the products marketed as stain or water resistant, despite safer alternatives being available. And it's a big problem, why? Because PFAS are there for the course of the lifetime of the materials. You can't just wash them away. Now, none of the ones without stain or water-resistant marketing appear to contain PFAS. So some of the items that contain this toxic chemical, rain jackets, hiking pants, shirts, mattress pads, comforters, tablecloths, and napkins. Now remember, these 10 retailers, each of them had at least one PFAS-laden product. None were innocent. So make sure, again, as I said before, avoid stain and water-resistant products at all costs. Where are PFAS banned? Right now, in packaging, food packaging, 
California, New York, Maine, Vermont, Washington, Connecticut, and Minnesota have adopted legislation to protect our food packaging. But lots of brands are stepping in and doing good PR by removing it from their products as part of an effort to reduce this chemical load. So where else are PFAS found? So I just mentioned clothing, bedding, dining room products, but you also find it in carpets and couches. You also find it in makeup, which we'll talk about later. We also find it in Teflon. Teflon is so important because that's really where we're having a big exposure. Anything nonstick, super important, and drinking water. Go listen to the water episode one and two. I talk all about PFAS found in our drinking water and how it's one of the major routes which we're ingesting them. It's also in the air. It's also in the dust. We found occupational workers working with PFAS. The air and the dust contained exponentially high levels of PFAS. We found it in breast milk, and it's almost guaranteed to be in your blood. 2007 study found PFAS, PFOA actually, the specific type of PFAS chemical, in the blood of 99.7 Americans which is incredible. And if you remember, I mentioned all the systems that this chemical affects. You also heard me talk about Dark Waters a few weeks ago on the show. And this whole movie is based on how DuPont, the, the company that created this uh, technology or this chemical, uh, was poisoning at least 69,000 residents of the Ohio Valley in Ohio and West Virginia, and they drank contaminated water and they were getting sick, really sick, and so were their animals. So I actually urge you again, if you haven't watched it, Watch Dark Waters to learn more about how PFAS is affecting us and how companies like DuPont really don't care. And remember, our children are most at risk. Pound for pound, they're eating more food, drinking more water, and they're exposed to these materials on couches and carpets, right? They're rolling around on the floor being kids. So most importantly, we have to make sure we're protecting our children. All right, so what about in the home? Like I said, it's not just skin contact. Indoor air in homes has been found to have PFAS concentrations 10 to 100 times higher than outdoor air, which is why it goes back to so many shows I talked about, about how we need to pay close attention to our indoor air, because on average, indoor air is more polluted than outdoor air. One of those elements being PFAS. So the environmental impact, we know that these chemicals wash away when we're doing our laundry, and they come into the environment. And now wastewater management plants don't degrade these chemicals. So they're recycled back into our water, and if you're drinking tap water, you can almost be guaranteed to be drinking PFAS. It's coming from factories utilizing this chemical both as runoff and volatile chemicals in the air, right? They leach. So say we throw away our rain jacket or our carpet that we just don't want anymore, um, or yoga pants that we won't, don't want anymore. These PFAS, they can also leach from landfills and they contaminate the approximately 16 billion gallons of water that are leaching from these landfills each year. And let me put out this staggering statistic. Washington State has estimated that 2,066 metric tons or 4.5 million pounds of PFAS in treated textiles are disposed of in landfills in the state of Washington every single year. And they've been de detected in rivers, oceans, air near cities as well, remote areas. They even found them on Mount Everest. So they're all over the place. They ain't going anywhere. They take forever to degrade in our environment. They take years to degrade in our system. But we have to make sure that we're doing the things for us in our homes around our children to start protecting our home first and then expanding that out to the community by bringing more awareness. So what are some solutions? When it comes to materials that you're wearing or that you're bringing into the home, make sure they're OEKO tech certified or GOT certified cotton or Green Guard Gold certified. This is gonna ensure that it's devoid of that chemical, as well as many others, but really that we're talking about PFAS today. And as I mentioned, stay away from any stain resistance, water resistant, moisture wicking, sweat wicking, dry fit, any of those, anywhere where it says it, it's almost guaranteed to be full of these PFAS or forever chemicals. Wash your clothing before wearing it. This is just generally speaking, it's not gonna do much for PFAS. You can shop secondhand. And also just put some energy into researching more non-toxic athletic wear that you can be wearing that fits the certifications that I mentioned. And look for more natural fibers. Fibers like polyester or spandex or rayon are ones that are typically treated with PFAS. Okay, before I move on, shout out to Momovation and Toxic Free Future for providing such really good information. Um, yeah, you may have not heard of PFAS. I did a little bit of it on the water episode, but I really wanted to bring light to this chemical. And like I said, go watch Dark Waters if you want to learn more about it on a cinematic aspect. And it may draw you in, but know that it's around, it's in our bodies. 
uh, but we can totally be empowered by removing those products from our lives. So in this product review, I want to review some of the results from Toxic Free Futures uh, study. Uh, I'm going to go into some of the products and companies that were found to have chemicals. I'll just say this really quick. You know this chemicals are poison when companies like McDonald's and Wendy's have announced that they're going to ban toxic PFAS in their food packaging. What else unfolded? Target did the same, especially in their private label beauty, cosmetics, cookware, and textiles. Lowe's did the same in fabric protector sprays. REI required that all ski wax products and clothing treatments it sells be free of PFAS by 2023. It also now sells its first flame retardant camping tent. And just last year, Taco Bell, Chipotle, Sweet Green, Cava, and Freshy banned PFAS in food packaging. So back to this review by Toxic Free Future. Uh, some of the jackets that they looked for were found at Dick's, REI, and Walmart. The offending brands that they found were Alpine Design, Dakin, DSG, Under Armour, Columbia, Patagonia, REI, Co-op, Savannah, Dry Point, and West Winds, uh, the latter two being the worst offenders. REI Rainwall, 511 Tactical, Lalinta, and Rothko. So when they look at other wear, they look at hiking pants from REI, a shirt and two pairs of pants purchased at Walmart, and a golf pullover and flannel shirt from Dick's Sporting Goods. The brands for these were all found to have PFAS, including Under Armour, Tactical, Rotho, REI, Lalinta, and Dakin. So when it comes to bedding, right, really important because, yeah, you might wear a jacket on a hike, take it off. You're laying on this bedding for six, seven, eight, nine hours, right? So four comforters, seven mattress pads or covers, and nine sheets or pillowcases were studied, and they detected PFAS in nine of the 13 bedding items marketed as stain or water resistant. Never buy bedding that is stain or water resistant, ever. So what are some companies that were found to have this chemical? Amazon's Fresh Ideas, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, Real Simple Fresh & Clean, that was one of the worst, Costco Beauty Rest, Kohl's Down Home, DuPont, and Epoch Home Techs, the latter two being one of the worst, Macy's Cotton Loft Stay Clean, Target Madison Park Down, Walmart Epoch Home Tex, and Certopedic Crib Mattress Cover, right? A crib mattress cover where you put in your infant it was found to have really high levels of PFAS. Three mattress pads, Beauty Rest Black, Down Home DuPont Serona, and Serapedic Crib Mattress Pad Cove. For the sheets, Fresh Ideas Cotton Rich Pillow Protectors that were treated with Teflon were found to have high levels of this toxic chemical. For tablecloths and napkins, they detected PFAS in 10 out of the 20 tablecloths and napkins tested. 14 were labeled as stain or water resistant. Most of the tablecloths labeled as stain or water resistant contain PFAS. Which ones? Amazon Hyson Checker Tablecloth, Max Mill Square Tablecloth, Province Imports Tablecloth, Bed Bath & Beyond Wham Suda Tablecloth, that's one of the worst, Kohl's Cuisine Art Napkin and Food Network Tablecloth, TJX Harvest Meadow Tablecloth, one of the worst, Color Drift Haley Tablecloth, Walmart Daily Chef Table Napkin, Infinity Collection Spill Proof Tablecloth, and two napkins that were high were the Cuisine Art Basketwear Stain Resistant Microfiber Napkin and the Daily Chef Table Napkin. So those were the results of their studies. You'll see that the bedding, the clothing, and the dining room materials were all found to have this toxic chemical PFAS when they're marketed as stain or water resistant. That's a take home. So again, as I said in the knowledge bomb, stay away from products that are marketed as such because you can almost guarantee this chemical is in there. And instead start moving towards more natural fibers. Uh, it's unfortunate. I wore a lot of Under Armour when I was playing sports when I was young. And um, after this, after doing the deep dive on all of this, I actually had to do an audit of the stuff in my home. And I ended up throwing away a bunch of shorts that I had that were, that were dry fit that I didn't even realize. Some of the underwear that I was wearing was uh, the material that is dry fit. So I threw those away and I made sure that I bought some really good quality organic cotton underwear.